Earlier in the series when we installed the taps on our top field I promised we'd come back and do configuration of the remaining ones. We've done Smart EPG so now we'll look at the other ones. So we're going to start by pressing the exit button on the remote that brings up TMS Commander and that will show us the taps that we've installed and the green means that they're actually running at the moment. So we've done Smart EPG. The first one we're going to look at now is Inf Plus. So we press the menu key after highlighting it and here we have all the settings. Now again, this is the settings that I have in place that seem to work for me. Uh, nothing to say, you can have to stick with this. You can uh, change it around, do what you like. So I'm not really going to um, discuss it too much. I'll just pause a little bit here and there so you can note the settings or press pause, whatever in YouTube and um, copy it down or change it on the fly. Please yourself. Um, so. We've got all the settings now for Inf Plus pretty much finished. Now to save these settings you'll see the down the bottom the red dot button. That is the record button on the remote. Uh, we've seen that before. Uh, just to remind you here is the um, location. It's the record button to save your settings. And that seems to be the case for most of the tap configuration. So we'll press that record button now and save those settings. Uh, then Back to the next one we're going to look at is TMS Archive. Again, press the menu button to get into the menu for that, that tap. Now there's lots of things in this one. Uh, it starts out fairly simple, just setting the language and times offset in the first uh, section. So we just back out of that and then into the next one there's a bit more detail now, general settings. So again, um, you can have a look at what's showing on the screen as we go through. The good thing about TMS Archive is for each of the settings you'll see quite a bit of information at the bottom of the screen there which is a big help when uh, trying to figure out what each of the settings do. I'm just going to let the video run here, there's no need for me to keep talking and I'll just chime in when I think there's something that's worth commenting on. So just take your time as we go through these and uh, remember to save and exit at the end otherwise you'll lose your changes. Back to the uh, top of that menu now, we're finished with that one so we can save and exit. Next one we set up is the key settings, so it's configuring on the remote which key is going to take over the functions within TMS Archive. As you can see there are a lot of keys which you can configure to do things which I don't use. I'm sure there are people out there who are much more experienced with setting up these taps than I am. I think I've pretty much used all the defaults most of the way through so if there's somebody watching who knows a bit more about it then please leave some comments below. The next one to be set up is the column settings and this is another one of the categories of visual uh, changes you can make to the appearance of TMS Archive. Uh, some of the earlier ones were more to do with the function of the tap. So we've almost finished this section now. Again save and exit the column settings. And the next category is the display settings. Again we're making changes to the visual appearance of the tap. So we've finished the display options, not going to bother with the sort and colour options, they're cosmetic. The recycle bin settings is a little bit interesting, 
Now this is similar to on a computer with a recycle bin, so when you delete files you don't necessarily lose them immediately. They'll go into a, uh, a hidden directory where you can um, recover them if you make a mistake and decide you need to get something back again. The last section here is where you can manually go in and force the recycle bin to be emptied and set the new file flags back to defaults, uh, delete progress, play and the things like that. So we can save and exit from here and back to the live TV screen. Uh, back to our TMS Commander with the exit button again. The next one on our list is TMS Commander and this one is very simple, just a single page of uh, setup information as you can see there. So this one you just press the exit button to save the changes. Very simple. The next one to set up is Time Shift Saver and if you press the menu key on this one uh, it doesn't actually give you the menu for the tap. It's one you have to manually configure yourself and you do that by editing an any file on the top field itself. So to do that we have to go back to the computer and start up FileZilla as you can see here. So we just connect to the top field file system like we did in previous videos. Find the program files directory and then go to the settings directory and then just find the time shift saver directory below that and there we see the time shift saver any file. Right click and view edit on that. It'll open up in your default text editor. So you can see it's currently set to clear out the time shift buffer after 36 hours. I'll just change it to 24 hours and save that. There is one other setting uh, below where you can get it to rename the files when it goes into the uh, time shift saving area. I won't change that. So we've completed that edit where you just close down your text editor and FileZilla will ask you to rewrite that back to the top field so you close the file and say yes and now that's completed editing and saved it on the top field so we've now finished editing time shift saver the last one to do is JDA skip uh, press the menu button and you'll be presented with the configuration screen for JDA skip. This one you have to help the tap to identify the keys on your remote control. So you have to press the colored buttons in sequence here, the red key, the green key, the yellow key, and the blue key. It's recognized all of those and you then associate those with the skip keys. So skip key one, you press the four colored keys in the same sequence and they are saved then within the tap so that it now knows which button corresponds to which function it's trying to represent. The first skip is 60 seconds, the second one's unused, the third skip is 30 seconds and the fourth skip is back 10 seconds. So you will we'll see that later in the next video how that works. The rest of the settings you can take down at your leisure and uh, that's it for JDA skip. So now we've finished configuring all the taps, we can exit back out and in the next video we'll show how to use some of these features.